Hey, how's it going? I wanted to go over the map video again because, you know, we've got some new information, but beyond that, a lot of new people have come in and they don't know the specifics of the layout. So I'm going to try to whiz through this thing. Um, you know, everybody remembers, everyone that's been keeping up with us here, that uh, George met Trevon, or saw Trevon farther down this way, and then he pulled in, and Trevon circled him here, and we've got all that on the uh, the sound, him, you know, when he talks about what Trevon was wearing, and then he got nervous about Trevon being there, but then Trevon walks over here, George backs out, he doesn't see Trevon, he comes this way, As he comes around this corner, Trevon goes this way across here and go, kind of shadows him. So when George gets over here, Trevon has made it over here even with him. When George uh, finally notices Trevon, he's in front of him because George is over here. The lights are shining over this way. And he tells the dispatcher that he's running. So, you know, now we now we know he says he's skipping. Either way, it doesn't matter. He's he's moving away in a quick manner. But we do know that at the point that uh George is getting out of his car cuz we can hear it. I'm not going to play that. You can go back and listen to my other videos if you want to. I've got another um map video where I say uh I have the key so you can go find that one. But basically the the main point is George is getting out of his car here and he's telling us that Trevon is turn is going south or he's telling the dispatcher. The dispatcher says, Which way is he going? And he said he's running towards the back entrance. So we know George is stepping out of his car here and starting to move his way this way now this is about 150 feet across here so by the time he gets to this corner Trevon's down here and we know that and I already talked about that Trevon's house is down here this bottom right hand corner and uh, that, that's where he was headed so George says George is getting out of his car he says Trevon's going south Trevon's running Trevon gets we're assuming Trevon continued moving south, you would think. You know, maybe he ch changed his mind. But we also have uh, Dee Dee telling us in her testimony that that Trevon was close to his house when George confronted him. And we know that George, is, uh, George, was, uh, George said he stayed up here at the top of the T. And we found Trevon's body over here. It was like, I think it'll see, it was like lined up with this wall right here. That's about right where it was. So there's his body. And it's four minutes after the point where George is getting out of his car and going this way. So George gets out of his car, goes this way. Four minutes goes by. And that's why the investigator Serena was so concerned because he's, well, he's like, what took you so long to get out of the car and walk over here to this side of, you know, to this road over here when you, uh, why did it take four minutes? And maybe that's an issue for George. Maybe he did come down here, but that doesn't, it's, wouldn't, wouldn't be an issue with the, with the trial, of course, because are with the stand your ground because the only thing they're concerned with with stand your ground is was he in fear for his life at the moment that he shot so it doesn't really matter all the other stuff doesn't matter but i just think it's interesting that we that we've got Dee, Dee telling us that george that trevon made it down here because he said he's close to his house he's not going to run anymore well certainly if he was up here by the corner he certainly isn't close to his house He's going to continue. In fact, we know that it's uh, 
<clears throat> from the time George gets out and goes this way, he comes over here, he doesn't find Trevon anywhere. So since he couldn't find him there, he didn't see him. And uh, he says that Trevon uh, hit him over here. And we have we have a witness, witness, I believe it's witness number 11, and you can go back and listen to my video. I have a video of witness 11, and she tells us that she hears the fight or she hears the commotion start on the north side of her house over here. She lives on the corner. And she hears it over here, so she can hear through these windows or whatever. And then she hears it move around this side of the house. So we, So what George was telling us, about it starting up here is true and witness 11 lets us know that and witness number six is john i believe he lives right here so he heard the he he saw he's the one that stepped outside and said told trevon to quit fighting leave george alone so at that moment if trevon was truly concerned with the gun or whatever he could have yelled at at john and said he's got a gun help me but of course he he was just beating the hell out of george he didn't he couldn't see george's gun at that moment and we know that if he if he was if he was concerned he would have been yelling for help for the gun he would have been saying the guy's got a gun you know he would have been yelling gun gun but there was none there was nothing about gun ever yelled okay so we know that so all these people that keep saying that uh trevon got chased down well george is short and heavy trevon is tall and thin trevon was a football player and also uh pretty much athletic and george has he's getting out of the car over here you know when you're struggling to get out of a car you're sitting down low you're getting up you know, get out of the car, you run down here. By the time he, you, get, you get out of the car and run down here, Trevon's long gone and it's pitch dark. And Trevon could have gone anywhere. I suggested once in one of my videos that he cut over through here and disappeared down here because then you could go completely out of view. I mean, if you saw the guy uh, coming over here, but I don't think Trevon ever saw him because he's getting out of his car when he's telling the dispatcher that Trevon's already made it around the corner and heading south. So if Trevon made it around the corner and heading south, then, then he couldn't see George getting out of his car. But I do believe that he eventually found out that he was uh, out of his car because he came back and saw George walking up here, and that's where he sucker punched him. And I don't know if you've, you know, most people haven't been sucker punched but you know as a kid when i was growing up in the in the uh early 70s there was a lot of that uh sucker punching going on and and i learned at an early age that it, you know if there's going to be a fight if it's absolutely at, if there's no way out of it the sucker punch is the way to start it and you want to be the guy that's given it <laughs> and apparently trevon learned that so trevon figured there was going to be a fight and he and he punched him and as soon as he did that gave george the right to defend himself with whatever force he felt was necessary to stop it okay so just a quick go over again one more time trevon sees george over over farther over in that corner george comes in trevon circles him here and, uh, you know, I'm going to hear a lot of people argue to me, telling me that George said it happened over here. The circling happened over here by the by the sidewalk. I know what George said. And, you know, the fact that he got it confused after getting his head bashed on the concrete, no problem. Well, whatever George said about what happened that night, as far as those specific things like that, it's not going to be an issue. Remember, the only thing that matters in Stand Your Ground is at the moment that his head was being banged on the concrete, at the moment that his nose was being bashed, at the at all at that time, that every time that he was getting a smash to his face that he felt like he was going to pass out, 
Did he feel fear for great bodily harm or death? That's all that matters. But, you know, I just wanted to make this little real quick clip just so that we can uh, remind ourselves of the layout because a lot of people seem to think that somehow or another George uh, had the ability or the opportunity to catch Trevon, and that's just not true. That Never did he catch him. In fact, he lost sight of him as soon as before he got out of his car. He never, from the time he got out of his car until the time that Trevon confronted him over here at this corner at number 11's, witness number 11's house, uh, did George see him. So he sees him go around that corner, and that's the last he sees him until, George, until Trevon shows up. And that's, we've got that verified by the, uh, by the non-emergency call that George had going for two minutes after after Trevon took off. So thanks a lot for listening, guys. Talk to you later.